Russia says precipitating the halt of violence in Syria and starting unconditional dialogue give a big hope for an end to the crisis. Our armed forces continue to pursue mercenary terrorists, killing dozens of them and confiscating their weapons in Homs and Der Zor. The Prime Minister carries out a tour of a number of vital utilities in Homs, accompanied by a big ministerial delegation. Good afternoon and welcome to our news for today. In its session yesterday, the UN Security Council voiced support for UN envoy to Syria, Al-Akhtar al-Brahimi's call to observe a ceasefire in the country during Al-Adha feast. The Council called in its statement on all parties to work for a permanent halt of all forms of violence in Syria. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has affirmed that the sooner violence ends in Syria and unconditional dialogue starts, the bigger the hope becomes to come out of the present situation with the least losses possible. Lavrov stressed his country's adherence to international law concerning the handling of the situation in Syria. Our Western partners do not prefer to talk about the situation in Libya at the UN Security Council, he said. However, they suggest that a resolution be approved in Syria, he added. Lavrov pointed out that Russia has believed since the beginning that lessons should be learned from the Libyan issue and that such big mistake should not be repeated. Lavrov said his country holds on to principles regarding all international questions so that everything is approached within the framework of international law. He added that Russia continues to maintain intensive contact with all major countries as it had done before and even in a more active way concerning Syria and has also its contacts with all the opposition sides. On his part, the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Gennady Gatilov has called on the armed opposition in Syria to abide by the holy Al-Adha feast truce. Gatilov affirmed that it is crucial for the armed opposition to be committed to the truce during the Eid, stressing that the success of the truce depends on the ability of foreign players to influence the opposition and steer it towards the required direction. Iran's supreme spiritual leader Ali Khamenei affirmed that the crisis in Syria is a crime committed by the USA and the Zionist entity. Khamenei said in a word he addressed to pilgrims that taking revenge from Syria comes as a result of its defense against Arab causes, especially the Palestinian resistance. He stressed Iran's support of the Syrian people and government. Khamenei pointed out that Iran fully supports Syria and its government and the political reforms adopted in the country. Terrorists have assassinated pastor of Marilia's Church for the Greek Orthodox in Qatana, Father Fadi Haddad, a few days after he had been kidnapped from Jdeida Tartuz by an armed terrorist group. A source at the Greek Orthodox Patriarchy in Damascus said, the body of Father Haddad was found today. He was shot in the head near Drusha on Damascus al qunaitira Highway. The source added that the terrorists had kidnapped him last Thursday while he was seeking to release a person who had been earlier kidnapped by terrorists. In Homs, our armed forces have chased a terrorist group that used to spread panic among citizens, carry out acts of sabotage and cut off roads in Mahin village east of Homs. The terrorists fled away, leaving behind their weapons. In Homs suburbs, an army unit intercepted last night a terrorist group that tried to infiltrate from Lebanese lands into Syria near Halat in Talkalakh suburbs, inflicting heavy losses on the group. Some of its members fled away back into Lebanese territories. In Homs, the authorities seized 60,000 electric detonators in Hasaya yesterday evening. They were hidden in a truck which was coming from Al Jarajir village in Damascus suburbs in the direction of Mambej in Aleppo Governorate.
In the Rizor, an army unit has killed a number of terrorists who try to infiltrate into al Jbeyle and Muazzafin neighborhoods. Another army unit eliminated a terrorist gathering behind a Noor hospital in al Hamidiyah quarter in Deir Zor. Among the terrorists identified were Kanjo Badia al Hafiz and Muhammad and Suleiman Mahmoud from the so called Abidhar al Ghifar battalion. Abdullah Ayyid, who has escaped from the terrorist so called At Tawheed Brigade, is a young man from Aleppo. He says he had been forced to join the terrorist and Nusra Front in Salah al Din neighborhood. He talks in detail about their terrorism and crimes against civilians under the protests of jihad. Abdullah said he was compelled to join a Nusra Front that belongs to Al-Qaeda organization in return for 150 U.S. dollars per month. He talked about the armed men's operations which included ransacking houses under the so-called protection of civilians. He added that all the Front's members had criminal records. He said a Nusra Front includes among its ranks non-Syrian terrorists. Those gunmen, he made it clear, were the ones who attacked with shells the Umayyad mosque in order to blame the Syrian Arab army for this crime. Aid said he was able to run away from the terrorist groups two months after he had been forced to join them and that he turned himself into the Syrian Arab army in Aleppo. In a racist and provocative measure against the Palestinian people, occupation government threatened the Palestinian Authority to take harsh measures if the UN General Assembly acknowledged Palestine as a non-member state at the UN. The threat was issued by Israeli Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman following his meeting with EU Foreign Coordinator Catherine Ashton. Lieberman made it clear that if Palestinians were to go the UN General Assembly, they will be subjected to harsh American and Israeli tough measures. Sudan called on the Security Council to condemn the Israeli aggression that destroyed Al Yarmouk factory near Al Khartoum neighborhood and caused the killing of two persons. At a meeting of the Security Council, Sudan's ambassador to the United Nations affirmed that his aggression is considered as flagrant violation of peace and security. He also indicated that four Israeli airplanes have penetrated the airspace and committed the assault, which affirmed again that Israel threatened peace in the region. Meanwhile, the Sudan's ambassador has accused Israel of interfering in Darfur's dispute and arming the rebels and asked the UN to put an end for this flagrant interfering. Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman Ramin Mehman Prest has criticized the French and Canadian Foreign Minister's statements on the Iranian nuclear file as irresponsible. He wondered how the French Foreign Minister can talk about the danger of the Iranian nuclear file and ignore the international agency's reports about the peaceful nature of this file. Commenting on the Canadian Foreign Minister's statements, the Iranian official said the former was trying to shut his own country's problems. He expressed regret over such unbalanced statements which contravene diplomatic norms. He added that the Canadian political and cultural elite reject the government's wrong policy which contravenes Canada's national interests. The official delegation headed by Prime Minister Dr. Wael al halaqi toured the city of Homs and inspected the state of services after establishing security in most districts and provinces. Accompanied by a number of ministers and officials, Prime Minister Dr. Wael Halqi toured the city of Homs, inspecting the state of services and citizens and verifying the re-establishment of security and availability of goods after the Syrian Arab army restored security to most neighborhoods. Al Halaqi voiced confidence that the armed forces will restore security to Syria and bolster it, calling upon the people of Homs to return to their city, reassuring them that all their needs and necessities are now available from security to supplies and food. The Prime Minister said that his tour aims to inspect the state of services and living conditions in Homs 
as part of the government's plan to communicate with citizens, urging officials in the province to overcome shortcomings in administration which seems lacking compared to services. He also affirmed the need to revitalize the health sector which suffers from obvious problems caused by the attacks of terrorists and their direct targeting of this sector. The state of services is good in some sectors, as the water and the electricity, as well as the living conditions. 27 out of the 38 neighborhoods are fully stable and life is normal in them and the shortcomings in services will be dealt with. The government is preparing a database of the affected people in Hummels and other provinces, and the banks will open their branches in the secure areas in addition to the area of the Bath University. The Prime Minister's tour covered Baba Amr neighborhood, temporary housing centers in Shamas and Al Hadara streets, Al Basil Health Compound in Kermin Laws, Homs Refinery, and Al Bath University, among other areas, where he met locals and listened to their problems and demands. The Prime Minister also honored families of civilian martyrs who were killed by terrorists. Minister of Health Dr. Saad Naif affirmed that 103 public hospitals in addition to 368 private hospitals and 70 medical centers are fully prepared to receive patients all across the country during the Adhaid. He pointed out that medics, doctors and nurses are quite ready in different departments and emergency sections to perform their duties 24 hours a day. During his tour in Al Mushtahid Hospital in Damascus, the minister added that all public hospitals were committed to deal with different emergency cases during the day. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more information about Syria and the region and to view our bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now over to the latest business and market news with Khaled Saqabani after a short break.